Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Well, welcome. Welcome, everyone. It's good to see you here. Just to say, relax. Okay, I'm, ch I'm chilled. Um, we don't mind a bit of noise from the children. Uh, I, I always say that church is a family. Families have children, and by my experience, children are quite noisy, so we can cope with that. If you need the toilets at all, you just go for, straight through the door on your left, right to the back, and you'll find them there. But we're here, of course, to, uh, to celebrate Advent as we head towards Christmas next Saturday, um, but also for Brady, who's uh, doing a good job of honouring what I've just said about noise, so that's okay. Isn't it? <laughs> Uh, we're going to um, sing a few hymns today. Some of them you may know, some of them you may not know. That doesn't matter. You'll crack on with us anyway. Uh, but first of all, we're going to um, light our Advent candles. Um, so uh, we have uh, four Advent candles. We lo we, we, uh, we've lit two purple and one, I'm not allowed to say pink. It's rose, apparently. But, um, and then today we're going to light another one. And then on Christmas Day, we light the central candle. So I'm going to get Janice to come up and light three of the four candles for me, Janice. Would you come and light the fourth one for me? No, she says, yeah. Go on, you can do it. <laughs> you, watch, you watch Janice do it and then decide if you want to do the fourth one for me. You don't want to do the fourth one. Do I have any volunteers to do the fourth one for me? Yeah. Come on there, my friend. Come up here. We'll do it together. Janice is lighting the three candles that we've already lit in the past three weeks. And then you and I, my friend, will take the stick off of her, which probably has a churchy name that I can't remember. Should you go around here? Thank you, Janice. Oh. Right. Come here. You hold on to that for me. There you go. Oh, can we just... You know, they don't trust me with lighting lighting candles no I'm gonna have to lift you up aren't I we can't reach it between us Can we? Oh, right now you do it come on there you go can you blow that out for me well done give it a round of applause <laughs> this candle is the candle where we celebrate Mary the mother of Jesus and also we celebrate love. I'm going to say a short prayer as we do that. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your love, your great work of bringing to our world Jesus, and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen. So we're going to grab our hymn books now. We have a little game of race into number 120. I'm always the slowest at this. Um, and you can uh, stand to sing if you wish. Um, as we sing, Come Down, O Love Divine. Thank you. 
Fantastic. Well, if you're not a godparent or a parent, you can sit down. But can I have the godparents and the parents up here? You did very well with that hymn, by the way. I know these things, hymns aren't always easy if you don't know them, but you'll know the next one, I promise you. So come up here, guys. As they come up, we know that there are others uh, who'd love to be here today. We're particularly thinking of Kelvin, aren't we? And, uh, and uh, the support that he gives. Um, and we know he will continue to support as we move forward. Look at him. He doesn't know what's coming. I've just been told he doesn't like water. Isn't that great? <laughs> so we'll have a bit of fun here today. Um, you, I, I'm sure you would never guess it from my wonderful accent, but I'm actually a Lee Park boy. Um, and uh, as I grew, we, my parents moved into here. We used to live behind Point Seven, and they moved in, into Bedhampton for a short time. And during that time, I and my brother were baptised in that font all those years ago. Now, I never went into church for another 20 years after that, but here I am today. Um, and only last year, I've got three brothers, and only last year I had the joy of baptising my other two brothers in that font. So this place is a special place to be baptised and christened. So we're looking forward to that. Um, you're going to need your sheets, guys. I didn't tell you that, did I? Uh, it's fairly straightforward. But, uh, I don't know if any of you were baptised at all as children, but if you were, you might choose today to reaffirm those promises that that they were made for you as youngsters. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. We thank God for Brady who has come to be baptised. Christ loves him and welcomes him into his church. So I'm going to ask everyone here, will you support Brady as he begins his journey of faith? Yes. They don't sound like they mean it, do they? So... Will you support Brady as he begins his journey of faith? Yeah. That's a bit better. Will you help him to live and grow with God's family? Yeah. I'm going to turn to you guys now as well. These are the promises that you're about to make. Now they said, oh, would you be godparents, didn't they? They didn't tell you it was a 25-year commitment, did they? So uh, God knows each of us by name, and we are his parents and godparents. You speak for Brady today. Will you pray for him and help him to follow Christ? Amen. Yeah, you sound like you mean it. That's good. We all wander from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I'll ask all of us, do we turn away from sin? I do. Do we reject evil? I do. Do we turn to Jesus Christ as Saviour? I do. Do we trust in him as Lord? I do. I'm going to make a little sign of the cross on his head in a moment and ask God to bless him. Now, you've worked out already that there is nothing special about Max. I can't magically bless Brady at all, you know. All I'm doing is putting a symbol on his head and asking God to do that because it's God that we trust will look after him. I, was, uh, I, I often say at this point, if I had three lions on my shirt, the symbol, you'd know what that meant, wouldn't you? It meant, actually, there was no hope of Max ever playing for England, but you'd know that it meant England. Well, as we put a cross on his forehead, if I can catch him, <laughs> it means that he is owned and loved by God. And it's off. <laughs> Brady! Look at this. Isn't this wonderful? This is a much better place to do it amongst the children. That's lovely. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed of Jesus. You are his forever. We say together, stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. And so may Almighty God deliver you from the power of darkness and lead you into light and the obedience 
of Christ. Amen. He does seem quite pleased about that. That's good, isn't it? We're going to trape down here now. If any of the children particularly want to come and stand around the font, you're more than welcome to. Come and join me around here. If you need to stand up and turn around to get a better view, you are equally welcome to. Um, he can eat. We've got a little while yet, so we can, if he wants to wander, he can. So as I was saying earlier on, you might have missed I was baptised. I was christened in this very same font as Brady. So I uh, guess we know what he's going to be doing when he's older, don't we, So. Praise God who makes heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Who's strong? Are you strong? You're not strong. Are you strong? No, you are. <laughs> you are. Come up here, my girl. Come here. No, you can, it's not, you've, got, you've just got to lift this up for me. <laughs> Who's going to do this for? Who's going to pour the water into the font for me? No. Go on then. You're going to do it for me. Fantastic. Look at that. Hold on to that. This is very special water. I took it straight out of the tap half an hour ago. It, just in the same way that I blessed Brady, but didn't bless Brady. It was God that blessed him. We're going to pour this water in in a moment. And we're going to ask God to bless it. Because I don't know how to make holy water. Although someone once did tell me that to make holy water, you burn the hell out of it. Well, bo they said boil the hell out of it, because they're better at telling jokes than I am. Anyway. Come on in, come on. In. Look at that. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> As I said, there is, this is just normal water. What do we use water for in life, guys? Washing, washing, yeah. We're going to ask God to wash Brady clean of any mistakes he makes in the future today. What else do we use it for? Drinking. What happens if we don't drink? Go on, say it. You die! <laughs> because we believe that when you're baptised, you come to new life in Jesus. And so that's the symbolism of water for us today. When, he, when I was baptised as an adult, I went under the water and came out a new person. That's what we ask for Brady today. And he can make his own decision in the future, can't he? He'll make his own mind up in the future. So we praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your son, Jesus. He was baptized in the River Jordan, where your spirit came upon him and revealed him as your son, your son that you love. He sent his followers to baptize all who turned to him. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this water that Brady, as he's baptised in it, may be cleansed in the water of life, filled with your Holy Spirit, and know himself to be loved as your child, safe in Christ forever. Amen. And as an example to Brady, those of us uh, here today who represent uh, him uh, are going to affirm our faith in Jesus. And so I'll ask some questions and you can respond. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to need someone to come. Would you hold that for me? God, you can do that, can't you? Would you hold it so I can read it? Because I'm going to need to read that. You need to come forward a bit. Because my eyes are very, very, very old. Brady, we're going to do this. Are you going to come? Oh! Should we sit you up here? Look at that. 
Look at you, my friend. <laughs> there you go. I've got you at the back. Do not panic, Mum. Brady, I baptise you in the name of the Father. I baptise you in the name of the Son. And I baptise you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Give a round of applause, everyone. <laughs> oh, you're all right, aren't you? Do you like this? Should I baptise then? <laughs> no? <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I'll see you better cope with that now. That's good. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ, pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of all the saints <coughs> in glory. Amen. You all right? You think about mummy and daddy, or do you want to stay with me? Okay, we'll go. <laughs> God has delivered us from the dominion. Oh, we've got to go back up there. I'm doing this bit here. You've distracted me. We need to be up there now. <laughs> Look at these people. They've all welcomed you into the church. I know that's strange. They're a bit odd. <laughs> but you know these ones over here, don't you? Right, now I'm going to hand you, I will hand you back to mum or dad. So, oh. Yes, he, he should be a bit wet. You go out there, guys, feel free. Yeah. All right. So this is our big church candle. We call the Paschal candle, the Easter candle, the big one. And as we were lighting a candle earlier on, we believe Jesus is the light of the world and shows us the way. And so we're going to light a candle now. This is for Brady. I'm not going to give it to him. I'm going to give it to Dad. <laughs> but you might take this out on his birthday or in a year's time on, on today um, and just light it and say a quick prayer for God to bless Brady. God has deli de delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in the light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light into the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we've got some, uh, a few little gifts here now. A little Bible for Brady for mum or dad to read to him at night. Right, see if I can get this right. I'm thinking, I'm looking at these going, Brady, but that's the one I just baptised. <laughs> Paul. We met earlier on. Sean. Sammy. Guys, I would throw these onto your fridge. Put a little magnet, throw it onto your fridge. And every time you go for a glass of wine or a cup of tea or whatever it is, just a little reminder to send... A prayer up for him. Just a, you've got the lay of me by now. Just a little God bless Brady, would you? As he starts school, as he grows older, as he gets his first girlfriend or whatever. Yes, because you're going to be around that long. <laughs> and this is a little card for Calvin as well, um, and a baptism card. With, so. uh, but what we're doing today is we're welcoming Brady to the church, and so this is now our opportunity to do that. Let's do this with uh, gusto. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Brady, by one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. And the crowd went wild. <laughs> We'd love to see you in the future at Messy Church or whatever it is and, and see him grow. But... Congratulations today. Give them another round of applause as they sit down. <laughs> One of my favourite things to do is to, is to baptise a youngster, knowing that in the future they will make their own mind up about following Jesus. Because it took me 28 years to go from that font to making a decision to follow Jesus. 
and then here I am today. So it doesn't mean you're all going to be thickers, by the way. It's okay. Um, I said you would know the next hymn, didn't I? So uh, we're going to turn to number 58. We're going to sing a Christmas carol as a celebration of his baptism. We're going to sing Away in a Manger. It's 59. It's 59. Anyone can be a vicar. <laughs> Let's sing number 59 then. Have a seat. That always makes me laugh. The little George, uh, Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Have you ever known a baby not to cry? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Jesus was human as well, so I'm pretty sure he did cry at different times. In a moment, I'm going to, just before we hear our readings, I'm going to say a, a special prayer of the week, a week we, prayer we call the Collect. Uh, and what we like to do here is just have a moment of quiet. It doesn't matter the children are making a noise, but for us adults and uh, older young people, um, a moment of quiet just to quietly in our hearts thank God for what you're grateful for. Now, I mean, I'm going to be thanking God for Brady in a moment in my heart. Um, you will have other things that you're grateful to God for that you might want to take a moment, just 10 seconds or so, to thank God for. So let's do that now. Let's be quiet as we thank God. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son. Grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much. Carol's going to bring us our first reading from uh, Hebrews followed by Anne, who's going to bring us our second reading. The first reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, 
chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 5. Christ's sacrifice once for all. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. First, he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, although the law required them to be made. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Anne is going to read from one of the Gospels. The reading is taken from Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 39. Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what was the Lord had said to her will be accomplished. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you. This is uh, one of my favourite Christmas readings, but... Um, Unfortunately, or fortunately for you, I'm not speaking about it today, so I'm going to invite Flair up, and I won't steal her thunder by uh, telling you why it's one of my favourites. Thank you. Fleur is one of our church leaders here who helps us explore um, the Bible and what it means, and uh, we, do, we take that seriously, don't we? So uh, we like to pray for each other before we do that. So I'm just going to stretch out a hand and ask God to bless Fleur as she speaks to us this morning. Lord, would you bring Fleur's preparation and the personality that you've given her so that it might bring glory to you and share with us your love. Amen. Oh, good morning all. I'm somewhat tied up there. Hurrah. Um, I'm a little worried that this is Max's favourite. There's an element of pressure now that there wasn't before. Um, I would like to start by saying joy. Joy to you all on the fourth Sunday of Advent. Who feels a slight sense of relief for getting this far? Gee whiz. And I would like to say a massive, massive special well done to all of the baptism crew because to do this, to get us all here, and then um, to be so close to Christmas as well. I'm just so filled with love and a joy for you all to be here and to celebrate Bradley. And um, we, we are your home, and I hope you continue uh, to see us as your home. And, and we've all made a commitment as a church to continue to praying for Bradley. So we've... Uh, Brady. I'm sorry. Okay, so... Um, so this sense of relief, I feel it. Um, and I think if I'm honest, I've uh, felt it for the last year because um, it's been a hard year, hasn't it, getting us here? Um, and it's more of a sense... It's more than just a sense of relief. It's also a sense of joy. 
um, because I didn't just get through the last three Sundays, arriving at the fourth Sunday of Advent, and I didn't just get through the last year, but I was loved and I've been cared for and I've been supported for no special reason at all, just that my God was with me and he's been answering my prayers, both those that I speak and that those that I left unspoken. And so today it is with a thankful joy that we've been all brought together today. And that joy and that love that we experience today and that we should seek out wouldn't be possible without the Christmas story. It just wouldn't be possible without the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not a massive one for tradition. Um, I guess I have a bit of a... Oh, Christmas for me is something you kind of have to get through. And the older I get, the more I'm starting to talk to myself seriously and say no it shouldn't just be something you get through it should be something you take from um and actually i think that's really important uh, for the children and i have children myself and and the and i don't know if you guys have been able to experience any uh, children's shows or nativities or choir concerts i know a lot of them have been virtual but still that message of the christmas story is there and it's something that children take security from and it's something we all take security and stability from because this christmas story is reassuring the tradition that we talk about it every year is reassuring from us it's a lighthouse you know it's a it's a cornerstone it's a fixture in our lives and the story of christmas is one of joy we are born to be happy, you know, and we're born to love, and, and we should feel that joy, especially, and I'm telling myself, I need to feel that joy. Um, and so today, I'm asking us all to experience the same joy as that baby, that tiny baby in Cousin Elizabeth's womb. Now, I don't know if you remember when um, we heard from that passage in Luke, that baby, when upon meeting Mary, leapt for joy. And we, we are in wonder, in the same way that Elizabeth was, as to why we are so favoured, that the Lord should come to us as a man, Emmanuel, as God with us. And why is it so joyful that Jesus was born to us. Now, this is a really, really simple message, and I'm not going to get very deep here at all. But we hear in Hebrews that before Jesus was born, died, and resurrected, the old law required our sins to be exonerated via blood, an animal, or burnt sacrifice, which meant if you did something wrong, you kind of had to, to burn something or give something away that was really, really expensive that you really didn't want to give away. But actually, that didn't really touch the sides. That was like cleaning an oily pan without soap like scrubbing a muddy floor with a tiny tissue. Um, you know, those sacrifices, they never really did the job. We are sinful beings. We are imperfect. We are full of our own self-importance, and we get things wrong all the time. God knows this, and God knows that we are sinful. God knows it is only him who can forgive us who can remove our sin from us. And he removes it over and over again. And he did this by bringing a tiny baby, his son, into the earth as God with us. And what joy that God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Because God is all-powerful. And everywhere, there is no sin he can't forgive. There is no sin too large for him to absolve. Joy. Joy to me that no matter what my sin, I will not be kept from the love of God and from eternal life with my Saviour in heaven. And what a gift is absolute forgiveness. I was working on this talk this week with Grace, my eldest. She's eight, and she was reading uh, these passages. Specifically, she was reading Hebrews, and I was trying to explain that Jesus' death and personal sacrifice is a gift for us all to accept. And like a dove, she asked, how do we ask for that gift, mummy? I was like, yes. And I said, we just, we just have to pray. And I started to look about all these prayers online. There's prayers about how you become a Christian. And I was like, oh, is it a prayer of belief? 
is it a prayer of wonder? And I was Googling and searching because I knew that there was this prayer. And it's a prayer that I've prayed. And some of, some of you may have prayed it when you're younger. And I found it. And it's called a prayer, a penitence prayer or a sinner's prayer. And I was like, oh, that, that doesn't seem so good for an eight-year-old, no? Surely there must be something a bit softer. Um, and I remember at the time when I read the sinner's prayer thinking the church has got its branding wrong. The church shouldn't lead with such dark concepts as sin. But sin isn't such a dark concept when you have Jesus. And actually, what I would really like is to say, um, maybe the sinner's prayer is something we can see joy in. Knowing that I am a sinner and you all as sinners, there is no sin too big for Jesus. And knowing that you can be forgiven by accepting the gift of Jesus' death, the sacrifice of his perfect life for your sinful life, that's good news. And so I'd like to give you all an opportunity to pray this prayer. And it may be that you've said this prayer a while ago, frequently or never, but I want to give everyone the chance this morning to invite Jesus back into their lives, to recognize that through Jesus' birth there is joyful good news, that our sins are forgiven and a life free from wrong awaits us. And if this is the first time you've prayed this type of prayer, please tell someone else and that they can pray with you. And there's a really simple model of prayer that you can follow. And it might be something that, as, as children, you'd all take away. And not just children in terms of age, but children in terms of we are all children of God. And it's called the teaspoon prayer because of the, the abbreviation. So the abbreviation in bakery cookery books is TSP. So it's, that's why it's called the teaspoon prayer. And the T stands for thank you. And the S stands for sorry. And the P stands for please. And you can pray this prayer whenever, the TSP. And, you know, I've been a Christian for a really long time. Um, I still use this model. There is no deeper model that, out there. You, and I think what's really important about living a Christian life, you cannot be an amazing Christian. And I think that's really important for us all to take away. It's an absolute concept. There is no good Christian and there's no bad Christian. There's no... 99% Christian, 12% Christian. How long I've been a Christian and how long Max has been a Christian, he's no better than me and I'm no better than him. We are all loved equally. So whatever your history is in terms of the church or whatever, God doesn't care. Honestly, I could be standing next to the Archbishop of Canterbury and I'm still treated equally in God's sight to him. And so that TSP is something really lovely for us to take away. Thank you, sorry, please. So I'm going to tell you all my TSP, and you might want to take, t say your own later. Um, but yeah, don't do it by yourselves. Always tell someone if you're praying. Okay, so T, thankful. I am thankful for the Christmas story, for the baby who was delivered in that grotty stable to save the world. Sorry. I am sorry for being overtaken by the business of the season, rather than focusing my time on preparing for the birth of Jesus. Please, please, Lord, may you show us your way, your truth, and your life. May you prepare in us a heart to follow you all, to be joyful for the gift of Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Fleur. You see, that's why it was better for Fleur to speak than me. You get a decent talk. Isn't it? So, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually skip over our next hymn because we've just been hearing about our TSP prayer and about how we're all equal in the eyes of God. Um, and so I'm going to invite Sandra to come up now, if she might. Um, Sandra is going to lead us in our prayers for the week where we pray for other people in our parish. Let us pray. Dear God, as we prepare for Christmas, may we be ready for your coming to us. As we make space for friends and relatives, 
may we make room in our lives for you. In our daily living, let us seek to do your will and help us to bring in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. We pray for Brady on his baptism day. Whatever the future may hold for him, may your hand be there to lead and your love be there to bless. Watch over him, his parents, his family and friends, and may your love be known to them all. Today we pray for those in government who bear a heavy burden for past mistakes. Give them the integrity to follow in your ways, your ways of goodness and of truth. We continue to pray for people throughout the world who are suffering with COVID and the many who have not even yet received their first vaccinations. Help us to remain vigilant and be patient with the additional measures that may have to be taken as a result of the Omicron virus. Lord, we ask that you would bless the children and young people of our parish as they begin their Christmas holidays. Be with them and keep them safe within their homes. During this Christmas time, may many of them come to know the joy of your love. We pray for the innocent victims of war and terrorism throughout the world. Remembering our own armed forces serving away from home at Christmas. Be with them, Lord and with their families and loved ones waiting anxiously at home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are weary in mind, body, and soul. Renew their strength and refresh their spirit. We pray for the people we know who are in need of your healing. We pray also for their families and families of those who have recently died, including dear Mike Case. In a moment of quiet, we remember those close to our own hearts. And finally, may the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting and resting in the joy of his love. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. He's getting ready, isn't he? As I said, if you get baptised in there, you know, you have to come up here and be a vicar. So he get... <laughs> I do feel like this sometimes when I'm up here. I just want to jump and for people to get the message of the love of Jesus. So, <laughs> let's, uh, if you grab your sheets, you've got the, the Lord's Prayer in there. You'll probably remember this one from school. So let's bring together those prayers that we heard from Sandra and the prayers of our hearts this morning. As we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I know how you feel, Brady. And just a few pieces of news as we come to the, towards the end of our service here together. You've got some news for us, Brady. <laughs> he says, if any questions have arisen today from what Fleur has said, or what I've said, um, we have a, a thing in the new year we call Alpha. You'd be more than welcome to that. We have a meal together, we have a chat, and we allow people to ask questions. No question is not allowed. And uh, we just chat about whether... Jesus is really what Max says he is, or whether there's other options. So. 
You'd be more than welcome. There's cards at the back if you want to find out more about that. And of course, we've got our crib service next uh, Friday, because it is Christmas on Saturday, isn't it? I must remember that. I must get up for that morning. Um, so again, if you want to come along to our crib services too, one at 4 o'clock, one at 5.30, you will need to book into those to let us know you're coming. And you can do that by going to the uh, church website or phone in the office. Um, and probably mostly for those who are regular here, um, we have um, two things. If you're likely to come to church on Boxing Day at 10 o'clock for the said communion, uh, can you let me or the office know? Because, um, frankly, I don't want to be on my own here. It would be a bit sad if I was on my own, wouldn't it? So uh, we're going to see if, we, if uh, some of us want to do that. It's at 10 o'clock on Boxing Day, um, which is Sunday. Um, and the other thing is, if you're intending on coming to Mike's funeral tomorrow at 1 o'clock, um, Tuesday, Tuesday at 1 o'clock, don't come tomorrow at 1 o'clock because no one will be here. If you intend on coming to Mike's funeral on Tuesday at 2 o'clock, firstly, the family have said, wear some colour. Don't necessarily come in black. Wear some colour. Um, and also, they've asked if you could do a lateral flow test before you come. That would be great. And if you need help with that, then just get in touch with me. We, we have a whole range of them at home. I can help you with that one. So. Other than that, we're going to sing our last hymn together as we turn to 556, if I've got it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sing verses 1, 4, and 5 of O oh Jesus, I Have Promised. So may the Lord bless you and make his face shine upon you and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. It's been great to be with you guys. I hope to chat with you soon. <laughs>